Okay, so we've now read the re request for proposals. Let's start thinking about assembling your project. And one thing is, what is the team like? Um, and this is just some thoughts. I can give you two perspectives. A big team may be better, or a small group may be better. In a big team, we can put all the experts together. We can bring in somebody who's relevant to each dimension of the project. We can show uh, nice, broad teamwork and coalition building. We can essentially share the wealth and, and show benefits of the funding that would go beyond just your particular group. Um, and so these proposals tend to be more authoritative and representative, inclusive. At the other end of the spectrum, under some circumstances, it may be better to be a small group. So if we have a huge number of groups, the budget gets spread out and diluted, and there may not be much benefit for any one group. Some team members are not good team players, which is to say, pick your collaborators very, very carefully. Um, this one is something I'm quite focused on. I many times feel that when you do science by committee, when you work in big, big, big groups, it often will distill down to something that's fairly boring. So these, these small proposals, or these small teams, can emphasize autonomy, agility, responsiveness, individuality, uh, may, may even be individual personalities. Okay, so now let's imagine we've designed our proposal and our group, we've chosen our funding agency, we've read about the funding agency. I want to go through seven elements of these proposals with you. Um, they won't always be explicitly in every proposal, but to some degree you have to deal with each of these seven elements. And I want to give you examples from each of four proposals that I've been involved with over the years. Uh, just for fun, I've gone ahead and included the proposal that is funding the biodiversity informatics training curriculum. So. The first of these elements is the executive summary. And it might not always be called an executive summary. It might be an abstract, it might be a summary, whatever. Uh, but essentially, you should remember that the people who are reviewing your proposal are busy, and they're probably rushed. So they're going to read this summary. It has to be very condensed and clear. It has to grab their eye. It has to essentially sell the proposal. And it has to be done up front. Because in some cases, it will be the only thing that the reviewers or the program officers have time to read. So this is a, this is a really critical part of the proposal. So here's one example. This is from the, the JRS Biodiversity uh, Grant, which funds this project, uh, but I start off with a very general statement. Uh, I get to what is the problem, which is access to techniques and knowledge, and then the solution. And then notice that I finish up with a very clear statement of what the benefit is. An ideal combination of direct contact training at sites across Africa and permanent online training resources like this video that will be available worldwide. So that's one. Here's another one. For the National Science Foundation proposals, you have these big single page uh, statements that are the summary. And again, many times, that is what sells the project or not. Here's another one. This is for the, the Commons pro project. Um, and again, it's, it's got the statement of the problem or the challenge what we will do, and why it's interesting. And here is the equivalent section from a proposal to MacArthur Foundation. And notice in this case that it's literally just a numbered list. So it doesn't even have to be full sentences. OK. A second element of your proposal is essentially why. 
you really, for the, for the reviewer that goes ahead and reads your whole proposal, you have to give them in-depth, detailed reasoning as to why the proposal uh, should be funded. What's the need? What's the benefit to the community? Essentially, why should they invest in you? Uh, this rationale can be based on work that you've done today, work that other people have done today, uh, but essentially it just has to set the scene for this project. Again, some, some examples. Uh, what are the issues you want to address? This is the JRS proposal. Uh, I mentioned that there are no textbooks in biodiversity informatics yet. Uh, formal academic programs are just beginning to appear. So what can we do to move this field forward in the immediate term? For the NSF proposal, again, statement of that challenge, development of the challenge. This statement actually goes on for several more pages. Back to the, the Commons proposal. Uh, again, this is more, much more general and textual. But notice this paragraph. This project aims to take advantage of, uh, to evaluate and understand land use change over 120 years of time span. Essentially, I'm, I'm, I'm laying out why this proposal should be interesting to the funding agency. And then here's for the, the MacArthur proposal. Uh, and this is the entire section. Obviously, you can't see that in this video. Uh, but the point is simply, you know, we point out problems uh, wherein lack of detailed knowledge of biodiversity limits the efficacy of conservation and sustainable development. Remember, that was one of their uh, key priorities in the MacArthur Foundation. OK. Third element is a detailed description of the project. So now, maybe you've made it through a couple filters. Maybe the reviewers read the abstract or the, the executive summary of 20 or 30 proposals. And they throw away 10 or 20 of them. And they have 5 or 10 proposals in front of them. And this is where the hard decisions come in. Maybe they've only got money for 3 proposals. So they're going to read through very carefully, and they want to see the detail. And the worst thing is, it's the expert in your field who's going to read your methodology and if that expert says, oh, this proposal has one serious gap in the methodology, boom, you're out. So this section really, even though most of the reviewers will never read it, this section really has to uh, be very, very solid. You have to show that you know the literature, you know that what's been done in your field uh, worldwide. You have to have considered all of the possible methodologies as you decide on the methodology you're going to use. Because what you don't want is for a reviewer to say, well, why aren't they using that technique? That's what I do. So this is your opportunity to say, I'm not using that technique because of this, this, and this. And finally, this is also an opportunity to offer some preliminary data, show your previous work, and essentially list the experience of your team members. So uh, for this detailed description, again, I'm going to show you those four proposals. I'm not going to go into detail. This is a fun one because this is the biodiversity informatics training curriculum, three training sessions yearly over three years, held in Ghana, South Africa, Kenya, and Egypt. Again, going through all the details. This is a training proposal, so it has a very, um, a very general format. For the National Science Foundation proposal, notice that there's immense detail. Frozen collections with 32 for birds, 14 for mammals, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we'll estimate completeness via this estimator. These are literature references. But essentially, look at the density of detail that we're providing here. For the Commons proposal, for the, the uh, very general proposal, 
Uh, there's almost not a, a, an explicit statement, uh, but essentially to revisit the first set of sites, locating them, photo photographing them, uh, relate the old and the new satellite imagery. This is a very short proposal, so there's, there's very abbreviated information here. And finally, for the, for the MacArthur uh, proposal, notice uh, it's a large group of international leaders in biotic surveys and inventories. There I'm, I'm, I'm waving the flag of the, the group. Uh, Nine-year ongoing collaborative agreement with each country give some details of the field surveys. So this is kind of in the middle as far as how much detail we provide. Next piece of the puzzle is the budget. So here essentially, we can't just say, give me this amount of money. We have to say, give me this amount of money for this, 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 and this. So essentially you have to tell them how you're going to spend the money that you're requesting. Give accurate cost estimates. If you say you're going to buy a new computer, maybe that's going to cost somewhere around $2,000. But if you say $2,000, it looks like you just are what we call bar ballparking uh, the estimate, about. And many funding agencies will be much more comfortable if they know that you've gone out, looked for exactly the computer that you need, and you can say, $2,145 instead of $2,000. So you give detail on how you derive the cost estimates. You request enough money that the work can be done, but you don't request so much money that the request is ridiculous. So remember, these people are, are comparing your proposal to other people's proposals, and they're going to get these same intervals of requesting enough and not requesting too much. So let's look at some budget information. Here's the, the budget information for the, the JRS project. As you can see, essentially everything is being spent on moving trainees to the training sites. Uh, and this is a very detailed table where it says uh, what, in which year, and how, how much the total is. Uh, we then give some notes on what the budget consists of. So a minimal salary, quarter time for a technician to process the videos, a little bit of supplies, uh, and then a lot of travel. But essentially you give, point by point, you give how you got to the number that you asked for in your budget. National Science Foundation budgets are are much more complex. I'm not going to go into the, the fine details, but it's, it's essentially personnel, equipment, travel, supporting participants, and everything else. There's a little bit in here as far as institutional funds, essentially to support the, the light and the internet and the, uh, all the other parts of the, of the institution where I work. In the MacArthur proposal, you can see, again, we provide uh, details. In fact, here we inserted this note regarding expedition expense calculations. Uh, my institution and one other rank amongst the most active programs of global scientific collecting anywhere. Essentially, based on that, we can tell you how much these expeditions will cost. So it's also a way of reminding them of the experience that the team has. Another table that gives all these details and um, then some, some detail on how we're going to support the people who are participating. And then here's that, that Commons proposal, and again it's very short, but basically we give just enough information. 15 day trip, uh, when it's going to happen, 10-day visit by two Mexican members to the University of Kansas, and they can see this way essentially how we're going to spend the money that we say we're going to spend. Uh, again, here are those exact details, four round-trip airfares, hotel accommodations per diems, Mexican visit to the U.S., purchase of imagery, and the idea is we give them enough detail that 
they'll scan down that and say, yeah, that looks like a reasonable amount of money to request. 